go back and, and redo some official pieces again. Um, I'm Jennifer West, I'm on the City Council, and Nora Davis is also here. And at this time, I'd like to ask for any public comment, anything that's not on our agenda. We're here for an agenda item. Well, we don't have another public comment. No? no? Okay. So seeing that, we'll move on to our action items. <clears throat> and I just want to know which item you're here for. Is it item 3B? Okay. And I know, Kathy, you're here for A, so let's do that. This is a discussion of Uber ride share services. Nora, do you want to? Yeah, let, let, me, let me just bring this. Uh, it's just, it's unfortunate we don't have the report of this. But uh, Kathy called me uh, several weeks ago about the Uber problem in, in um, Emeryville. And our, our taxi cab drivers have lost about 35% of their income more. 80%. 80% of their yeah. income. And of course, these are people who pay city taxes, are inspected by the uh, police. And uh, so they're, they're well regulated. They're very city well. Uh, Uber is not just an Emeryville problem, it's a problem throughout the United States, but the country and the world is spread like wildfire. But that leaves us with a problem. Uh, I discussed this with the city attorney. He's in contact with other cities mm -hmm. that because everyone is facing the same, same problem. I put this on the agenda so Kathy would have a chance for more than three minutes right. to discuss the problem. So if you can wrap it up, Kathy, sure. and give us an indication of what you're looking for from the city. Sure, absolutely. First of all, I'm Kathy Pawlowski. <clears throat> I am the <clears throat> owner of Yellow Sunshine Cab here in Emeryville. I have been in the taxi industry for 23 years. Um, I'm here today to discuss um, Uber Technologies, which is a rideshare company um, based through an internet app application on a smartphone, which pairs drivers with um, cars and, and drivers uh, and people in the community that need a, sh a, a ride a ride share. Everything is done through a credit card and an application on a cell phone. Um, this has been going on for four years, but it's really come to a head over the last year and a half to two years. Um, they, um, first of all, they are a company who does not um, insure properly their drivers, and the drivers are private owners of their cars, so they have no commercial insurance, which we and our ordinances impose that we have to carry a um, certain amount of commercial insurance um, for the safety, public safety of our passengers. Um, and that is an ordinance that's already in, in effect. Um, these drivers do not. We are also um, uh, in, instructed, and in, in, in it's a must be, to have a thorough live scan background check on each and every driver um, that represents himself in this city in Emeryville. Um, a drug and alcohol testing as well, every single year. Um, inspection of our vehicles, um, inspection of our insurances, um, that there's no lapse in coverage and, and whatnot. This company um, does none of those. And um, n now what's happened is, uh, over the last year, and, and maybe even longer, I think we discussed about placing more taxi stands in Emeryville um, so we would become more visible. That never took place because I was told there was no space. Henceforth, over the last year, Uber has come in with a big boom. These cars are coming in. People are downloading the app. They're pressing the button, and here come these private cars. While we're sitting at the only stand that we have been designated to sit at, in which we pay to sit at basically with our fees and our permits and, and our regulations. Um, they come in after we've been sitting for hours and they pick up a passenger with no insurance, no background check, no nothing. Yesterday, I'll just give you an example. I sat from 5.30 yesterday morning until 10.30. There were 13 Uber cars that came in. I got one $6 fare in five hours. Um, we have 81 taxis licensed in the city of Emeryville, um, and 80% of our business has now been taken over by, I'm going to say technology, yes, but technology done illegally. 
there's been no, um, they, they are a big company, they have a lot of money. If you have a lot of money, then you have to regulate yourself just like we do in our governing cities. Um, right here in, in Norris, aware of this, um, was a class action lawsuit that was placed by the law firm of Eamon Smith and Marcy on, on behalf of Emeryville, Berkeley, and Oakland drivers, which includes about 500 of us, um, to Uber Technologies. Uh, it is a class action lawsuit um, on the basis of the RICO Act, which is racketeering and illegal business practices. Um, this is a real problem in our city. Your drivers are losing money, and they're not able to feed their families. I myself have a large fleet. I'm down to one taxi right now. Um, they're becoming very um, aggressive in their behavior, um, and they shouldn't be because they're the ones that are illegal. Um, and what's going to happen is the city of Emeryville um, is going to lose their taxi community. Now, I do have to let you know that Uber has been sued from every single state in the United States and abroad. They have a claim faced against them right now from the Americas with Disabilities Act, where they do not pick up disabled and blind passengers. Um, we, as taxi drivers, know, and most of us have worked in other cities, so we've gone through sensitivity classes where we know how to treat the elderly and disabled and the blind, and we know <coughs> that we're not able to refuse a customer that has a dog because that is their lifeline. We know that. The Uber drivers do not because they're their private cars and they refuse them. That's why the lawsuit has been placed against them through the Americas with Disabilities Act. Now, um, I've lost a lot of money. My colleagues have lost a lot of money. Um, the only... <laughs> thing we have right now basically are a few passengers that A are senior citizens, B are disabled, or three are minorities that get off the trains that take um, taxis. Um, it has been noted on many occasions that the Uber drivers do not pick up people of color, dis disabled, and the elderly. Um, my business, on that aspect, I'm saved. But when it comes to just the normal 30-something crowd. Um, yesterday, I witnessed on Hollis Street, right in front of some of the companies, they're pulled over, the Ubers. You know them by the U in the window and their hazard lights that are placed on. To me, I was always taught through driving that hazard meant something was to warn you of something ahead. They pull over wherever they feel like it, whether it be our taxi zone or a bus zone, and put their hazards off to pick up passengers. What I have discussed amongst the drivers of Emeryville, and I speak for all of them, the ones that would like to speak, but English is limited, and I speak on everybody's behalf. Um, they are tired. They are fed up with the city of Emeryville for not coming forward and saying, hey, we've got to do something fast. Um, we have talked to the, to the police. Um, Officer Joel Hannon has been aware of this. He said, bring it to the city council. I, now I'm bringing it to the city council. Um, but what we are requesting from the city, and yes, it would be nice if Oakland and Emeryville and, and Berkeley would all form together. But right now, we don't really care about this city. We care about the city that we work in, and that's Emeryville. We are asking from the taxi cabs that our business owners in this city we are asking for there to be placed an emergency ordinance in effect immediately with the police involved to issue citations to these drivers that are coming into our city and illegally picking up passengers for money that have not gone through what we have gone through as taxi drivers and business owners. We are business owners in the city of Emory. We all carry a business license. They are some cyberspace application that is coming in and railroading us. And 
I'm tired of hearing the excuses as that, oh, they have so much money or they're unstoppable. Make this city stand out. Let's show Uber Technologies that we are a city that stand up for the rights of the business owners and the taxi cabs in this community. Let them know that we take disabled people. Let them know that we take people of color and the elderly. Let them know that. And we are not going to stand for you to come in. It's a public safety issue. If a passenger gets in an Uber transportation car and that driver has no background check and he does something obnoxious to his customer, or and, and, and it has happened, and or if there is an accident, they try to sue the Uber company. You can't because Uber says that they're an application. You can't sue us. They try to sue the, the insurance company. You can't because they carry private insurance. That will be possible. The third thing is going to happen is that that customer will sue the city of Emeryville where they picked up that passenger at because the city is where they took it and the city allowed it to happen. So we are here today to state Please place an emergency ordinance. We need police presence. These drivers need to be cited. And a citation that stems over $5,000 to let them know that we mean business. We would also request a letter from the city attorney to Uber's technology, letting them know, we don't want your business in our city. You run your operation illegally. We have business owners that do not. They abide by our rules. We need enforcement from our police. We want to let them know that the city of Emeryville can make a lot of money on issuing citations. We want to let them know you are not welcome here. We follow our rules. We respect our community. Whether it's black, white, green, yellow, senior, disabled, we as taxi drivers respect it. That's what we're asking right now. We are expecting from the city to back us up with an emergency ordinance to be placed into effect as soon as possible. We would like a police officer on the premises, um, on Horton Street, on Hollis Street, on or near the Amtrak. I know the Amtrak is private property, but we also have a taxi stand from Emeryville that sits on the property of the Amtrak. And we are all legal and we are binded by the city. Can I ask um, you a yeah, sure. Um, there's some other um, entities as well besides Uber, and I'm curious. Sidecar and Lyft. Right. And, and I'm, I'm curious if you have any other. We, we, we don't see them as much. Mm -hmm. The Ubers are more aggressive, and they're more visual, mm -hmm. and um, they, they're very antagonistic mm -hmm. um, to us as well. Um, sometimes I come in the morning, and they're sitting in the taxi stand. Mm -hmm. um, can I say something? Uh, there's also a conflict of interest between those apps. For example, Lyft is suing Uber for illegal practices. Uh, Uber had the possibility to create an app that spies on their calls. So when they get a call, they offer a, sh a cheaper price. So of course, you as a client, you want the cheaper price. So the rights of counsel. So right now there's they're a lawsuit, they're fighting. Right. It's a virtual fight. The, because, you know, uh, the problem with with an app is that today's can be a business, they make a lot of money, they have a lot of money, $19 billion behind them. Mm -hmm. They can buy their way through, through it, and if there is too many problems, all they can do is just sell the app and disappear, because they're virtual. Mm -hmm. And leaving all the rest of us, all the rest of us with all these problems. The other thing is that, they are circumventing attacks because we, I'm doing this business just like Katya and I for 20 years. Mm -hmm. We are doing this business and every fee that we pay to operate is a tax. We all know that. And they are circumventing all of this situation and getting away with murder. You know? Why they should be? Because they have $19 billion to be above the law. I don't think so. So we're, we're, we're not worried about the small ones. We're worried about the ones that are Uber, which are the aggressive ones and the most visual ones. Um, like I said, what we're asking for today is emergency order to be placed into effect and a letter of uh, intent to, to 
um, issue citations um, to these drivers by the city attorney's office to Uber Technologies. Um, and like I said, we will need police presence to let them know that we mean business. This would actually place Emeryville on a bigger map than what it already is right now. If we're the first ones to come to say, you know, we've got a beautiful city here. It's growing in leaps and bounds. We're talking about public safety. We're not asking them to come and join our party. Yeah, if they'd like to make a taxi, sure, come and join. Make a taxi, do what you have to do, make business happen that way. We don't want illegal activity running in our city. We, we don't operate that way. And we're trying, as taxi drivers, we're trying to protect the city from future lawsuits, which are going to transpire <coughs> when there are accidents. We know how, we're professional drivers. We know how to handle the bad weather, the disabled people. We, we know how to do these things. So the taxi drivers have asked me um, to also let you know that until an emergency order has been placed, our renewal processes will not be paid this year. Um, Uber Technologies are not paying to operate in our city. We are. Um, the taxi drivers that are here will no way, shape, or form until an ordinance be placed. We'll be paying their city fees for 2015. They want action and they want it now. Um, we deserve it. We've been a part of this community for a long time and we're a vital part of the community right now. Um, we don't discriminate. We take people where they need to go. We make business happen in the city. We care about our seniors. We care about our disabled people. We care about our people of color. That's who we are. Kathy, um, what you just said is very serious. It is very serious. The taxi drivers uh, are intending not to pay their uh, business license tax. Correct. Can you get something in writing from the taxpayer, from your group, sure. that states, um, you know, the fact that you are asking for an emergency ordinance? Yes. And, and the steps that you're willing to take, uh, which will have very severe consequences, sure. both for the city and, and for the taxi owner. Sure. Uh, but let's get something in writing. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, can we hear from the police chief if he has any comments? Uh, good morning, chief. I'm sorry, and I truly apologize. I'm I said, oh, so. Busy night last night. No, we got involved in a conversation and just lost all the time. Um, the city attorney uh, is has, has sent counsel his beliefs uh, on the legality of Uber and that they're regulated by the Public Utilities Commission. Uh, they do need a business license. It's his under, it's his belief that they also fall under our uh, cab and uh, our taxi cab slash limousine uh, license uh, or ordinance at this point and are subject to the, the constraints of that ordinance as well. Uh, the, the issue for us is that it is an application that is uh, on the internet and these are not uh, marked vehicles, they're, they're personal vehicles that people are using uh, to participate in the app, app. So us having the ability to visually see them and enforce our, our um, ordinance is difficult. Um, May I interject you're... for just one moment? Uber is uh, marked by a U in their window. Blue and white. In their, their window, and at nighttime, it does light up. And if we had police presence at the Amtrak station, they would be very aware of who's coming in. They, they're very obvious. Sorry, their, their apps on their phones are also on the dashboard, so you can see it from, even if you see it in a car, you can see it. And if you cited them, Ken, would you you'd be citing them under the, the business license? We'd be citing them for no business. We'd be citing them for no business license, and we'd also be citing them under our, our tax cab ordinance. Because they don't have a permit to operate the city. They don't have a permit to operate the city as, as a tax cab ordinance. Well, this is an action item for this committee, and uh, I, I think it's a, a serious issue. I, for one, would propose that we pass this up uh, to the city council 
hopefully we're too late for the first meeting in December, but for the second meeting in December, uh, to, to have the uh, city council consider this and uh, see what, what action they'll take at that time. Yeah, I recommend that. I mean, I won't be on the council to, to vote on it, but I would recommend that they take it up. And the question to the police chief is, in, in the meantime, we should be enforcing the rules that are on the books right now mm -hmm. about operating with a business license and a taxi permit if you're, if you're falling into that category. Yes. Um, and so I'd like to ask the police to to monitor and enforce. As time system. permits, we yeah, do. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. This We have a lot more pressing public safety issues mm -hmm. than to sit at, at the Amtrak station and look for, for Uber uh, cabs to do it. Um, Can I suggest something? I just don't have the manpower to do That's it. That's been the excuse, Ken, for many years. Uh, I, I know it's, it's not an excuse, it's a fact. Uh, it's a fact that there's a lot more pressing public safety issues in this city okay. than protecting the taxi drivers from When, when from a customer gets in a, an illegal car in the city of Emeryville gets sued for a, a fatality, then how pressing will that be? Sorry. I've seen the parking oh. enforcement given citations. They My parking enforcement them. people are not police officers to confront taxi drivers. But it's the same issue is there is an emergency, for example, uh, a, a, a fireman can issue a citation to a vehicle that doesn't want to get out of the way. That's no, he can't. He can. He can uh, give a citation. Uh, so uh, so I, I think... Um, we, we, and as time permits, we <coughs> will provide attention. That's a, that's a very... And, and my concern is not, it's not only uh, responding to the concerns that you brought today, but just in terms of enforcing what we have in the books. Yes. No. <coughs> I have a question here. Uh, if it's illegal for other vehicles to park in the taxi stand itself. Yes. So when But you're you never around it, when we well, call to report someone, them. If you see an Uber in in the space, call and make a record of it to the, the police department. They're not emergency numbers. I see another hand too. Yeah, I just want to make a comment. Um, first of all, I think your idea of not paying your license is very foolish because if you don't have any taxis and Uber will be the only answer. So that's that's not a good We're thing. asking for don't, police I mean, presence. Let me finish speaking, okay? Don't alienate the people that are trying to help you. And I think that's what you don't argue with the police chief. They're trying to help you. You know, but the city really doesn't stand alone. This is really a regional problem. So okay. I, I think they're on the right track by trying to, you know, coordinate with other people and find out what they're doing. But and I and I will take this video from the Transportation Commission because I go to all the meetings. So I would support the recommendation of moving forward to cite people who are illegally picking up. Okay. That's great, but I, one more comment. We had the same complaint when we called the city of Emeryville when Oakland drivers were coming in and also picking up. When are you going to get fully stuffed, Chief James? When, when are you really going to care about public safety and legal action? I mean, le legal things that are happening in the city. You always put us on the back burner until we come in and place a lawsuit, then what? I mean, these are excuses and we don't want to hear them anymore. We are a vital part of a community. And until you realize that, <coughs> then we are gonna to have to go to the next level. Now we have and, a law firm that's right. The next record. level is it goes to council. Right, it'll that, go to council for consideration. consideration. Uh, until then, we, we've got two more weeks until that council meeting. Until then, we should lose more business or if there's a fatality that happens on Emeryville property, then what happens? Well, we don't have the power as transportation committee to change or make an ordinance as you've requested. Sure. This is something the council has to consider. And um, I, I understand your urgency. I think it's, it's important and I'm glad that you've raised this and you've brought it to our attention. But unfortunately, it is the pace of the way our public process works. So but what about the police? The police are always supposed to be for the community. So I, what I've heard is that as our resources allow, which is, just start reality. writing tickets to Uber and your resources will climb. Um, we will enforce what's on the books, which which you have rightly brought to our attention has not been properly enforced. So. I'd like to hear from Marie. No, I, I just wanted a little, <coughs> she wants an emergency ordinance, but it sounds like we already have something on the books. There's no exactly. really need to do an emergency ordinance. Exactly, we have something on the books now. So, But this should be a, dis a discussion at the council level. Right. And, and, and when shall I bring um, to your attention a letter? Um, should we date it? Should we should we put it to the city attorney? 
that the drivers will not, until the ordinance is put in place, will not pay the fees? If uh, possible, by December 2nd, our staff puts together um, the packet that will go out December 5th, which is a Friday, for the council meeting on the 16th. And all um, records that want to be included in that packet would have to be to our staff, I would say, by December 2nd. Is it's that to the fair? Supposed to, well, the, they're, they're due today. Are they due today? The packet for the 18th are due today. Oh, because of the holiday? The no, 18th of that's, well, it's oh, always, normal. it's three weeks before the council meeting. Yeah. So, so basically, our letter is not going to hold ground. No, I would, no, your letter is very important, actually. And whether it's in the packet or if it's sent separately to council before the meeting, it'll still be effective. So if you could do it as soon as possible. Though. And then who do we address it I to? I would address to Sabrina Landreth, who's our city manager. Who Sabrina? is not here today. She often attends these meetings. But in the Sabrina Landreth? Yeah, L-A-N-D-R. Landreth, and, and where is she located at? She's here at 1333 Park Avenue. She's the city manager, and she uh, oversees the entire process in terms of... What and the city happen. council meeting is which date? December 16th. At, at 7 p.m.? 7.15, yeah. 7.15? Yes. Okay, so um, we will probably have our attorney, because we're represented by a law firm right now, um, probably draft this up for... The city, we're, 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 we're very serious, and I wouldn't come here if I wasn't serious about well, saving yeah, my own business. Well, yeah, it's get it into us. And, and, and the livelihoods of, of other um, drivers. Yeah. But um, I'll just let you know that at that meeting, I am 100% sure you will have every single taxi driver that owns a business license in this city. They will be there, and it will be very loud, and it will be very, very intense. Well, and, and and I think it is that important is what, you know what I'm hearing from you is it, it, it's I, a livelihood and it's really yeah it's important for the council to hear that and to understand what we can do locally <coughs> and what you know other solutions we're looking for that but I just have to let you know that that the taxi drivers are not going to use you don't have enough resources the police department can't this that this that we're tired of excuses let's put something in action and make it happen and make your business owners if the city lost 81 business owners right now you're looking at about eighty one thousand dollars for 2015 for the city of Emeryville and and if uber wins then good luck trying to regulate them so we, we've passed all of our tests and we've done all of our rules so now it's up to the city council to see what they're going to do yeah I would like to excuse myself yeah, thank you for coming as well. And myself as well. Uh, we are going to move ahead to our next question, which is item 3B. It's considering a, a curb driveway cut on the south side of 59th, just east of the Palace for delivery access. And I think there are folks who are here. Sarah, turn it on. Okay, so they turn an application. It's uh, planning an application tree 14 001. And um, it'll buy. And I'll, I'll let you describe the process. I think the best this is Laura. Jonathan, is that correct? You got it. And Sebastian. Sebastian. Um, should I pass these out first? Great. This is the, this is the exhibit that relates to the um, parking situation, which is why we're here today, which is in parallel with the tree removal. Uh, Sebastian works for Total New Energies. Um, which supplements space from Amaris on 59th Street. And they're moving into a space that currently um, doesn't have a delivery entrance. The building had a delivery entrance in this exact spot prior to Amaris's remodel in 2008. So we are trying or applying here to reinstate the driveway curb cut. To do that, we need to remove a tree, and that's part of the tree replacement mm -hmm. permit that's already um, in in the works in the works and I have that here if you want to see the bigger but picture. Is there a difference between moving a tree and replacing the tree? Oh, so let me clarify. This application is to remove the existing tree and then reestablish a new tree and I'm just going to point on here. Oh, yes. Or you have I have yeah. the whole picture. Okay so how big is the existing tree? Um, there's a pic if you turn to so let, let be. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, the tree removal aspect of this is going to the planning commission. So that that part is taken care of by the planning commission. 
separately from the issue of the tree being removed and then replaced by a new tree several feet away from the west is the um, issue of the parking. So that's why they're in the transportation committee today. So, so, so the, the request is here to the transportation because putting in the drive would cut eliminate some of the parking. One space. One space. One space. One space. One space. That was not there prior to 2008. Exactly. It has been there since 2008, except for most of this year, there's actually been a dumpster parked in that space. So, which is why I'm having trouble taking some photographs. This is the current situation as of two weeks ago. This is the tree that needs to be removed. So and the tree we've moved moved over. Tree number one. Tree number one. And so, where are you, where are you putting? So tree number one is going to be removed and then they'll move it over here. Yeah, the second page oh. will work. Okay. Is, the, uh, <coughs> is where the new tree will go. And the new tree will, will go be according to our new specification for tree planting. Yes, and we would require stuff. it. Yes, and that's, that's, what, that's why it's going to planning commission to make sure very that, good, very that all good. of that is being taken uh, care of appropriately. I see no reason why we wouldn't move forward with this. Makes sense to me. This is an area that I think has high uh, parking uh, what, demand, I guess. is it? I, do you have any information about the parking space and how much those are used or turn over this in a green curb area. I know that in this area we, we established a time limited parking, but I don't believe this part. No, there's that. no green curb on the street here. There's one, actually there's one blue curb partway down the block. Uh -huh. And then there's some vestiges of, you can see on the very front page, mm -hmm. there's some vestiges of red curb uh -huh. from the, the prior curb cut that was there oh, yes. before no, 2008 that has never been taken <coughs> down. So, okay. sort of. What do you have to say about this, Maurice? Well, if you really think about it, those inside this warehouse probably use these parking spaces, right? And so that, that Amherst probably uses the spaces, there'll be one less space for them to use. And Amherst has not made any objection to this. They yeah. know about it. Oh, definitely. They're doing the work. <laughs> and they've been noticed on, uh, on the well, planning commission they're, thing? They're the ones doing the work on the inside of the warehouse. That want. So they're supporting yeah, They're supporting it. And the owner, the building owner, signed off on the application. So, right. and so I didn't also, realize the uh, parking spaces weren't striped. Would they're not be, physically, they're not, there's no paint on the street. Would you be able to make it part of the project to stripe those so there's no confusion as to where people? Because it looks like parallel parking. Sure, yeah. Wait, wait, Maurice. You always say that you can get more cars in if you don't have stripes. Well, these are diagonal spaces. I, think, I, know, I know that. I think probably it's warranted for the diagonal spaces to have some stripes. I, I, I wasn't aware that they weren't stripes. They may have been years and years ago, but there's no striping there now. Huh. What condition is that yeah. in? Actually, I'd have to take a look. We just crack sealed it, what, is what I recall. Probably ready for slurry seal probably in the near future. That can be added to the conditions of approval. Good, good. Project. Do that. That's good. In your picture here, mm -hmm. is this truck, which is the further, uh, middle picture, mm -hmm. the truck furthest to the edge? Uh, it would be the eastern portion of the of the building. Is this truck parked in the red and the way? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I, 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 I was going to say that if that is yeah. a, a space, then we're going to lose more than one space to the curb cut mm -hmm. as yeah, a diagonal sure. parking. That construction truck should not be parked there. Okay. Because okay. you get the Greenway connection right here. Right. Can I understand a little bit better? The curb cut is going to lead to a roll-up roll 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 door. Yeah. So that's part of the remodeling that's going that's on. Right. And that will facilitate right. deliveries, correct? That will facilitate deliveries. So it's yeah. not a loading zone. It's no. actually entrance to... Yeah, there won't be physically vehicles driving into the building at all. It's just for delivery of equipment for his operation. So will how, they be backing into that delivery? rolling door, or is this probably no? Not. No, they would probably just use a lift gate. Mm -hmm. and so would they be parking at an angle, or they would be actually pulling up parallel? Yeah, depending on the size, the small one. Oh, the truck. Depends yeah. on the size of the truck. The, the small one we're going to be able to back it mm -hmm. without blocking the road, and the large one is just going to have to park on the side. Mm -hmm. 
How often do you get delivered? Oh, it's going to be very rare. We put this roller door for bringing, equi bringing in equipment for uh, test, and maybe once a month we're going to bring in new equipment for testing. So not that often, but this is for large equipment, so that's why we need to put this roller door. Otherwise, we won't be able to bring equipment through the entire building because there is another roller door on Holly Street. But we would have to go through narrow corridors inside, and we wouldn't be able to bring large, like pallet size equipment. That's why we put this one on, the, on this side of the room. Do, do you see any objections, Marie? I don't see any issue. How about you, Chief? I don't see any problem. Well, let's put. Uh, but uh, process wise, the tree removal. Will that have to come to council, or is it going to right. be done by staff? That'll go to the planning, planning commission. Planning commission. Planning okay. commission. And then it will need to pull an enforcement permit to remove the tree and to install the micro cut. But does the council yes. have to weigh in on the removal no. of the tree? No. Okay. Sarah. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the planning commission will remove, will approve the, the tree aspect, as the city council, as part of the transportation report, will approve the curb cut parking aspect. May I suggest that the, the approval be contingent on the planning commission that yes, yes, what, it what, is. what's going to council yes. what's going to council will be approve a curb cut contingent on planning commission approval. The planning commission mm -hmm. will be before the when it will be the week after. The eighteenth. Yeah. Yeah. It'll so be on the eleventh. Or sixteenth. I think it's actually better to bring them together if, if possible or the timing to be such that the council has that information. Is that possible? Um, well, the my understanding was that this would go to the December second. No. Sixteen. Sixteen. So this, I, oh, I would 16. suggest that we would. This is approval contingent that planning commission allows removal of the tree because if yeah. the tree has to stay. Right. Then Okay. Well, right. then if this goes to the December 16th meeting, the planning commission meeting will have been before then anyway. Oh, good. So, so you can report on that. Good. Yes. So it, it's just important, I think, uh, for the council to get the whole picture. So whenever this is in the transportation report, it should reference also the actions of the Planning Commission and what else is going on so that right. it's not a piecemeal, you know, you're just yeah. this and this has already been decided or Right. So if you could please include that. Back so it, it'll be in the plan, in, in this report. Okay. I'll, I'll put it in there. Okay, I'll put it in the report and then that if it, you would like an update they, about it at it, the meeting. That the action requires a tree removal or tree move, moving and that, that action is is uh, going to the planning commission on the 11th for approval. Yes. Great. Okay. Okay. Cool. Good. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Thanks for coming. And how soon will the work be uh, undertaken? So the project itself inside the building is going on now. Mm -hmm. And basically, as soon as we finish running the gauntlet of the, the, you know, getting through the rest of this, this process, we'll basically get back the, the hardscape uh, drawn, quoted, and we'll just start that. So that most likely it'll be. January. Yeah, or probably late January by the time that happens, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All success for your business. Thanks. <laughs> well, you know all about the taxi and Uber issues in the city, too. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm using both. I'm using taxis and Uber. Yeah. Didn't hear you say that. Uber. Well, hopefully, you're not using Uber in Henry. We're <laughs> <laughs> not calling it Uber. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to move on to our last action item, which is the discussion of the December meeting schedule, December 23rd. Yeah. And that I was just putting it on there to ask if okay. council wants to meet on that. What if the members of the committee, okay. and Jennifer, and you won't be here. Loop. So uh, Nora, it's up to you. Wants to meet on the 23rd. Do we have anything burning on uh, transportation? Uh, th there's, I mean, let's not have a meeting. This is the the, the agenda that we have. We had nothing held over, yeah. nothing pending, and there's nothing going to be held over. From Very this good. We will eliminate the December meeting. So cancel that meeting, and that will also give whoever the second uh, council member will be time to right. be, be ready to go to the January meeting. Okay. Um, and staff comments. Okay. Well, any member comments? I have a comment. I want to thank Jennifer for being the chair of this committee. She's done a fabulous job. Oh, thank you. And we are really going to miss you, Jennifer. 
Thank you. That's very kind. Thank you for sure. everything you've done. Um, and I have a comment which is a little less lofty, but I appreciate your, your words. Um, in terms of the San Pablo Avenue uh, construction that's been going on there with the safe routes to transit the Star intersection, um, thankfully the striping was uh, resolved. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was Friday. Um, I just I thought that was really bad uh, form on the part of the contractors to have such confusion on such a busy section of our, our streets. And uh, it was just dangerous. It did not feel safe for me on a bicycle and um, for cars, too. I saw them doing all kinds of funny things with the lines, lines and the parking not being clear. Um, but I, I'm glad it's resolved. Um, my second comment is about they poured concrete in the center of San Pablo where the, the left turn from MacArthur used to be mm -hmm. and no longer is. And I, I see that the bicycles will be allowed through, but not cars. So I have a couple comments. One is uh, cars, it's going to take a little while for cars to figure out they can't turn left on MacArthur. And right now it's construction. But going forward, what kind of ways can we inform drivers at their opportunity, which is 40th, and, and in try advance. in advance? Because you're going to have a lot of cars turning left right on that little street, which is, I think, 37th. Um, but, but I don't and I'm concerned about cars just, you know, or they have to go to 34th. And it, it, well, if you. I don't think you recall though that during peak hour that left turn was prohibited anyway. So that's when you would four to six. Right. So it's in the off hours is where you would were getting that left turn. Right. So the most of those left turns were occur would have occurred during peak hour. Mm -hmm. Those cars are already making the left turn at the next street. Do we have counts of like how many cars are No, we didn't have counts. We were concerned mostly or Caltrans was mostly concerned about the queuing distance between mm -hmm. I think I guess it would be thirty fifth mm -hmm. coming back because we had a we could have stacking for that little firm right, all the way back up to MacArthur, yeah. and we were shortening that distance. Right. And so we studied that as okay. part of it and with our surveillance. Okay. But the left turn move onto the side street wasn't really investigated mm -hmm. in that we weren't really changing the peak hour. I see. Because it was already prohibited. Because it was already prohibited. Yeah, well, it's just going to be a cumulative. I'm, I'm concerned about folks on 37th and some kind of outreach or understanding of what's going on. And then finally, um, they poured that concrete, and I don't know if you've seen that the, there's water standing inside that concrete. The water's been there now for three days. Inside the median? Yeah, where they, right, inside, inside the median. The median. Okay. So they right. clearly did not look at drainage issues. Well, that's going to be backfilled with topsoil, so. Concrete, actually. So, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, so it's going to be okay. sloped to the side. Yeah, oh, it's not finished. Yeah, it's not okay. yeah. Right. So They'll it's not pour be between the curves you see there. OK. Yeah. And then there won't be water. Right. Yeah. Okay. It won't be whole. I just wasn't sure what they were thinking. We love our stormwater to go it's up into the ground. <laughs> okay. It's not doing that there. Um, okay, I think that that's all of my comments. Very good. With that, we adjourn. Thank you so much.